In this video, I explain to you everything about the t-test for independent samples and how you can easily calculate the t-test online with DataTab. Let's start from the scratch. There are three variants of the t-test. The t-test for one sample, the independent sample t-test and the dependent sample t-test. The simple t-test is used to check whether there is a difference between a group and a given test value. This t-test is very often used in quality assurance, for example, to check whether a produced screw really has the given weight on average. The independent t-test is used to check whether there is a difference between two independent samples. For example, if there is a difference between the salary of men and women. The t-test for dependent samples is used to test whether there is a difference between two dependent samples. For example, samples where a person was interviewed at two different points in time. This video is about the t-test for independent samples. In the description of this video, you will find links to my videos and tutorials about the other t-tests. Now you may ask yourself, what is the difference between an independent and a dependent sample? Independent samples are made up of independent people and measurements. A person in a sample is not related to a person in that sample. There are two completely independent groups. For dependent samples, the measured values are available in pairs. The pairs result, for example, from repeated measurements with the same persons. So this person is exactly the same as that person. They are simply questioned at two different times, for example, before and after a surgery. With the independent sample t-test, we consider just this case, namely independent samples. But what do I need the independent t-test for? Let's say you want to check if there is a difference between two groups in a population. For example, if there is a difference in salary between men and women. Of course, it's not possible to ask all men and women, for example, of a whole country about their salary. So we take a sample. This means we create a survey and we send it out randomly to people. In order to be able to make a statement about a population based on this sample, we need the independent t-test. Therefore, the research question that can be answered with an independent t-test is, is there a statistically significant difference between the mean values of two groups? Possible questions could be, is there a difference between people who have a university degree and people who don't in terms of their health? Or another question, do two production plants produce screws with the same weight? And do smokers have a higher risk of heart attack than non-smokers? In order to calculate an independent t-test, the hypotheses must first be derived from the research question. Hypotheses are assumptions about reality whose validity is possible but not yet proven. There are always two hypotheses, the so-called null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis assumes that there is no difference between two groups with respect to a certain characteristic. For example, the salary of men and women does not differ in Germany. The alternative hypothesis, however, assumes that there is a difference between two groups. For example, the salary of men and women does differ in Germany. Furthermore, we distinguish whether a hypothesis is directed or undirected. This plays a major role in the interpretation of the results at the very end, but more about the interpretation of the results later. First of all, what is an undirected and what is a directed hypothesis? Undirected hypotheses test whether there is a difference, whereby it does not matter in which direction the difference goes. For example, there is a difference between the salary of men and women. 
However, it is not checked whether men or women have a higher salary. It's only checked whether there is a difference or not. Another example is the assumption that there is a difference in heart attack risk between smokers and non-smokers. And again, in an undirected hypothesis, we do not test whether one of the groups has a higher or lower risk, but only whether there is a difference or not. A directional hypothesis additionally gives the direction of the difference. For example, men earn more than women in Germany. Or smokers have a higher risk of heart attack than non-smokers. In research, directed hypotheses occur most often because in most cases you want to test the direction. But what about the assumptions for the t-test? We'll look at them now. What are the assumptions for the independent t-test? There is an independent variable, for example gender, which has two characteristics or groups, for example male and female. These two groups should be compared in the analysis. The question now is, is there a difference between the two groups regarding the dependent variable, for example income? So now we have four main assumptions and we'll take a closer look at them. First, the two groups or samples must be independent, the variables must be scaled in intervals, the variables must be normally distributed, and that the variance within the groups should be the same. Let's start with the first one. The two groups or samples must be independent. As the name of this t-test suggests, the samples must be independent. This means that a value in one sample must not influence a value in the other sample. This is the case when you measure the weight once from a group that dieted and once from a group that did not diet. But you don't have an independent sample if you measure the weight of the same people once before and once after a diet. Feel free to watch my video about dependent and independent samples. The second assumption is the variables must be scaled in intervals. In order to carry out the t-test for independent samples, the mean value of the sample must be calculated. This only makes sense if the variable is interval scaled. An example would be the weight of a person in kilogram. But the educational level of a person, so secondary school, high school and so on, is not interval scaled. The third assumption is the variables must be normally distributed. The t-test for independent samples gives the most accurate results when the data from each group are normally distributed. However, there are exceptions in special cases. For example, the weight, age or height of a person could be normally distributed. But for example, the resulting number after throwing a dice is not normally distributed. Let's look at the next assumption. The variance within the groups should be the same. Since the variance is needed for the test statistics t, it is important that there is the same variance within the groups. This could be the case for weight, age or height of people. But for example, the stock prices in normal times and in a recession may have a different variance. So now the big question remains, how do I calculate a t-test? Well, there are two possibilities. Either you use a statistics software like Datatab or you calculate the t-test by hand. We will now go through both. We start with the calculation with Datatab and then we go into details of the individual formula. This will help you to understand the t-test even better. In order to do this, we simply go to datatab.net and copy our own data into this table. The data set is actually a bit small with only 12 cases, but as an example, it should be enough. Then we click on hypothesis testing. Now you just need to choose here below the variables you want to evaluate. Let's say you want to know if gender has an influence on the salary. So you just choose salary and gender. 
Now DataTab automatically calculates a t-test for independent samples. If the assumptions for the t-test are not fulfilled, you can also simply calculate the man with the u test. Furthermore, you have the possibility to calculate an undirected, also called two-sided hypothesis test, or a directed, also called one-sided hypothesis test. In the directed case, you must then specify what your null hypothesis is. So the question is, do men or women have a higher salary? Here below you can read the respective hypotheses. The null hypothesis is, the female group has smaller than or equal values as the male group for the dependent variable salary. And the alternative hypothesis would be, the female group has larger values for the dependent variable salary than the male group. But let's start with the two-tailed case first. Here we see the descriptive statistics and the box plot. After that, you will get the Levine test for variance equality. The Levine test for equality of variance tests whether the variances of the groups differ significantly from each other. For example, whether the homogeneity assumption of the variance has been violated. If the p-value for the Levine test is greater than 0.05, the variances are not significantly different from each other. This results in a p-value of 0.09, which is above the defined significance level of 5%. The Levine test is therefore not significant and the null hypothesis is confirmed. Therefore, there is equality of variance in the samples. Since we assumed equal variances, we can now read the p-value from this row. We get a p-value of 0.056. Let's say we chose the significance level to be 0.05. In that case, the p-value is greater than the predefined significance level. Thus, the null hypothesis is retained. If you don't know exactly how to interpret the p-value, feel free to look at the summary in words. A two-tailed t-test for independent samples, equal variance is assumed, showed that the difference between female and male with respect to the dependent variable salary was not statistically significant. Thus, the null hypothesis is retained. In addition, you can also check the assumptions here. Of course, you should do that at the beginning of your analysis. Now I will show you which formulas are behind the t-test for independent samples. Depending on whether your group has an equal or an unequal variance, there are different formulas to calculate the t-test. To find out if there is variance equality or not, the Levine test for variance equality can be used. This test checks whether several samples have the same variance. If the p-value in the test is greater than 0.05, variance equality can be assumed. Let's start with the formulas for equal variance. In the case of the t-test, we want to calculate the test statistic t. This is obtained by calculating the mean value of one group minus the mean value of the other group. Of course, this difference plays a major role. The greater the difference, the less likely it is that both groups come from the same population. This result is then divided by the standard deviation of the mean, also called the standard error. The more the mean varies, the more likely it is that there will be a large difference in the mean between the two samples, even if they come from the same population. In the case of equal variance, the standard error is calculated using this formula. N1 and N2 are respectively the sample sizes of group 1 and 2. Sp is obtained by using this formula. Here S1 is the standard deviation of the first sample and S2 is the standard deviation of the second sample. If everything is inserted, the t-value can then be calculated using this formula.
The degrees of freedom result with n1 plus n2 minus 2. Now let's look at the case with unequal variance and then go through what we do with the t-value. In the case of the unequal variance, the t-value is calculated with this formula. Now of course the question is what to do with the t-value. A statistic software simply calculates the p-value from t-value and the degrees of freedom. But this is a little bit difficult by hand. In this case, you read the critical t-value from a table and compare that critical value with the calculated t-value. You can read the critical t-value from this table. The link to this table can be found in the video description. But how does that work? Let's look at an example. Let's say we have set the significance level of 5%. If we are testing an undirected hypothesis, this means we split the 5% between the left and the right. So we have 2.5% on the left and 2.5% on the right. Therefore, in the table of critical t values, we need to look at 97.5%. This is what we get by subtracting half the significance level from 1. So we are in this column now. Let's say the degrees of freedom in our case is 6. So we are in the table in this row. The critical t-value then comes out to be 2.447. Now we need to check whether our calculated t-value is smaller or larger than the critical t-value. If it is smaller, the null hypothesis is retained. Otherwise, the null hypothesis is rejected. If you have a directed hypothesis, you have 5% on one side. Then you don't have to check the table at 0.975, but at 0.95. And you can read your critical t-value here. Of course, you still have to check whether the results go in the direction of the alternative hypothesis. I hope you like this video and see you soon.